Hey guys, it's Tracy from the Decorating Room here at Wilton. Have you ever seen those colorful decorated cookies that are so popular in bakeries and in social media? Now, if you've ever wanted to make these beautiful cookies, then you're in luck because today I'm making the royal icing you need to make these cookies amazing. The icing I'm going to show you is a thinned down royal icing, and some people know it as flow-in icing or flood icing. It's actually all the same thing. And in the decorating room, we refer to it as thinned down royal icing. This icing dries to a smooth, hard finish that looks like porcelain. And once it's set, it's pretty durable, which makes it perfect to present as gifts like in treat bags or boxes, unlike cookies iced in buttercream, which never fully dry. Now, in case you are wondering, this is the exact same recipe we use in the Wilton decorating room. And we've used this icing on hundreds and thousands of cookies. Now, I love this recipe for icing cookies because it's so versatile and the consistency is completely adjustable. I also like that it's made with meringue powder because it makes your icing shelf stable. Now, some recipes use raw egg whites, which is traditional, but using meringue powder allows you to make the icing up to two weeks in advance and store the decorated cookies at room temperature without any of the safety concerns that come from using raw egg whites. Now, thinning icing is fairly simple and it's really fun to play around with and experiment. Even if you're a total beginner, you'll be making perfect cookie icing in no time. Now let's start with the base of our cookie icing, which is a modified version of our royal icing recipe. We have the recipe in the link below, but I have some additional tips for you. Now if you've made royal icing before, you already know the importance of sifting your powder sugar because it can sometimes clump together and especially important to sift powder sugar when you're decorating cookies. Now not only can the small sugar particles clog your tip, but any small lumps and bumps will show up after your icing dries. Now make sure to use a clean mixing bowl free from any grease because your icing will not set up when it comes in contact with grease. Now here's our secret for achieving the right consistency. Slightly underbeat your icing. Our royal recipe calls for about seven minutes of beating on a stand mixer. But for cookie decorating, probably around five minutes is enough. But what's more important to look for is the right texture. Now you want it to be thick, shiny, and smooth, just like this, not light and fluffy. And beating this icing too long will make your icing foamy, and once it dries, it could be crumbly. And my last tip is to always cover your icing. Royal icing starts to dry very quickly when exposed to air. After making your icing, immediately scrape the sides and cover your bowl with a damp cloth so that it doesn't dry out. Or place your icing in a bowl with a tight-fitted lid. Otherwise, you could end up with small, dried particles of icing that will be very hard to dissolve and will also clog your tips. And it's a good idea to keep your spatulas clean, maybe in a glass of water while you're working, and cover your filled icing bags with a damp cloth as well. Today, I'm going to make two consistencies of royal icing, a medium consistency for outlining and a thin consistency for covering a cookie. Using these two icings will make it so much easier for beginners to avoid overflowing. The icing that covers the entire cookie needs to be thin so that it floods the surface evenly to create a smooth finish. But using this icing alone is hard because it's very fluid and it could run down the sides of the cookie. To prevent that, we recommend piping an outline with a medium consistency icing that creates a dam to hold in the thin icing. To make medium consistency icing, I'm starting with a half a cup of stiff royal icing and I'm adding an eighth of a teaspoon of water. I'm going to use a small flat silicone spatula to mix. I like using a silicone spatula because it makes it easier to scrape the sides but you can use any flat utensil. I also like to use our angled or a flat spatula. Now flat surfaces keep air pockets from forming, so I definitely recommend flat spatulas over spoons which have curves to them. Now I'm stirring very carefully. You can see I'm not moving up and down with my spatula. I'm getting to all the sides of the bowl using a figure eight motion. Now using a flat tool and gentle mixing motion prevents air from getting into your icing so that you don't get air bubbles. Now you might be tempted to stir quickly just to get it done, but that will definitely create air bubbles. Because of weather or temperature, sometimes you'll need to add a tiny bit more water to get the right consistency. Now if you do, just add a little bit at a time. And don't worry too much about being perfect. Thinning icing is not an exact science. Just focus on seeing and feeling the right consistency. It should be more spreadable than stiff, kind of like marshmallow fluff. And as you can see, medium consistency still has some body to it. It should have soft to medium peaks when you pick it up with your spatula. 
This makes it so much easier to control when piping outlines, especially if you have intricate shapes. I'll keep going with the same bowl and thin this all the way down to thin consistency or flood icing. Now this is what we will use to cover the entire surface of the cookie. It needs to be thin enough so that it flows on the surface and self levels so that it dries to a smooth finish, but it needs to be thick enough so that there's enough body to it. To make flood consistency, you'll need to add a half a teaspoon of water to every half a cup of stiff icing to start. Now since I already added the eighth a teaspoon of water to my medium icing, I'll just add a little more water. Now just as we did with our medium consistency, we are stirring very gently with the flat tool, again using a figure eight motion. I'm even more careful here because thin icing is more prone to air bubbles. We want to avoid air bubbles because they will rise to the surface as the cookie dries and they can create tiny craters. Once again, you will probably need more than this, but it's better to start with less. Now gradually add small drops at a time until you reach the consistency of something like school glue, maybe a little thicker. A clean medicine dropper is a great tool to have to add water slowly and carefully. To check if we're at the right flooding consistency, we're going to use the 10 second test. I'm going to take some icing with my spatula and drop it back into the bowl. If it sinks after a full count of 10, then your icing is set. See that? The drop completely self-leveled and disappeared. After you're done thinning your icing, you will still have some air bubbles, and that's natural. Decorators have all sorts of ways to get rid of them. Now in the decorating room, we like to let the icing sit for a little bit, anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour to let the bubbles rise naturally. You can go longer, but we don't recommend overnight because the icing will start to separate. But no worries, if that happens, just gently stir to bring it back. You can make it go even faster by tapping the bowl on the table several times to force the air bubbles up. Then you can gently stir the top surface to release the air. This icing is now ready for decorating. If you're pressed for time and looking for a shortcut, just use our ready-to-use royal icing. Now Wilton also carries a ready-made cookie icing, but it's slightly different from today's recipe. Now this type of cookie icing won't dry as hard as our thinned royal icing, but it's convenient to have on hand for simple projects. Now thinned royal icing is such a versatile medium for cookie decorating, and there are a ton of design possibilities beyond covering a cookie. Make sure to head over to Wilton.com to browse tons of cookie decorating ideas. We have lots of beginner-friendly projects for you to try. Now, if you want to print out this recipe, check out the link in the description box. As always, make sure to leave us a comment below if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer. And if you found this helpful, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out our other delicious recipes. Thanks for watching.